Welcome to Hearthstone Champions League. Uh, this is Nimsch. I'm here with Raven to tell you the story of day two. This is day two. If you missed day one yesterday, we had Kolento, Stansivka, uh, Raven. Who else was there yesterday? We had Kolento, Stansivka, Sixo, and Dog. And Stansivka and Sixo did actually go through, but. Today we've got Group B, and we can now already see two of the players. The first match is going to be Ecop versus Hoy. The second match is going to be RDU versus Pavel. But straight into this game. Yeah, so Paladin versus Warrior. And uh, let's see. Uh, who has, uh, like, normally, who do you think has an advantage? Uh, this looks to be like Patron Warrior from Ecop. Uh, the ghoul and the slam sort of giving it away. And um, I think the Patron Warrior is normally pretty favoured. Uh, the way the Patron Warrior deals with this matchup is, or the perfect way, I guess, is they actually go Despite turn 4 into Patron's turn 5 before the Secret Paladin can play the Mysterious Challenger. So then they have so many minions on the board and the Paladin isn't good at dealing with Patrons. So then they just gain uh, the tempo from that and just, uh, just win through board. But if the Secret Paladin can actually uh, keep hold of the board early on and try and dodge those uh, wind, uh, whirlwind effects, then uh, it can be pretty safe and just steamroll like Secret Paladin is kind of known to do. Yeah, I, I agree with that completely. If you just go with the perfect curve, uh, Warrior might have trouble dealing with uh, what you play. Also, if Warrior is forced to use Execute earlier, they might not be anything to deal with Mysterious Challenger. Uh, what do you think about playing one big game Hunter in a Patron deck? Yeah, it's really interesting, actually. Um, uh, Patron's definitely a deck at the moment where there are a couple of slots that are definitely like you, the player's own choices, like stylistic choice. Uh, some players we've seen use the uh, the Face Monkey, some players use Corcron, some players use Shredders. So there's definitely space to put a BGH in there. It's just yet an, yet an easy removal whilst putting a minion on the board as well. So it's pretty reasonable. We'll see if um, Ecop's using that in his list. Uh, but looking at it though, he doesn't have a weapon or patrons yet. So it's definitely looking a little bit rough. And what he's decided now is how he wants to deal with this um, this muster for battle board because that secret's just well a secret i guess you know he doesn't quite know what it is and it's really awkward to try and play around all of them yeah if that's a competitive spirit then all those guys will be a 2-2 so if you play a ghoul and if they actually increase in size it will be easy to go for the goal and not give ecop anything he had a couple of options would you ever ever consider playing coin on that turn or, or do you keep the coin for something bigger like like lothab um, yeah, I think because of his hand, he might need to keep the coin. He does have Lothar and Dr. Boom, so and nothing else, really. The Armorsmith's okay, but it doesn't really impact the board heavily, whereas he'll want to, because he doesn't have these patrons or anything, or even a weapon, he wants to go into the you know the big drops he does have to try and you know wrestle the board early as possible versus the Paladin, because that's what's going to be really key. Oh, he's got a really interesting decision now, though, whether he goes with Owl, he could Blessing of Kings one of the tokens, uh, run the weapon and the other two in to kill off the ghoul, but then the issue is, like, your 5-5 five five has one damage on it, which means it can just be executed, and is five damage to the face really worth it? Yeah, that's uh, something I've, to think about. Absolutely, that's a decision he has to make. Um, personally, I feel like I don't think Owl and uh, Haunted Creeper might be a bit, a bit better. Just challenge the patron and ask them, do you have that whirlwind? Like, you just threw a ghoul into the into those those guys, so I have a tool to actually silence the ghoul and go through it, deal with it easily. So he's deciding to, to deal with the ghoul without losing the board and uh, having a couple of smaller dudes. And still, that secret is Avenge, I believe, right? Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. And um, Ecop's card draw, I mean, it must be really rough. He's almost forced into playing the Lothep here because I think at this point, Armorsmith hero power just isn't going to be good enough. Um, it just doesn't put anything on the board. And with the Battle Rage, you can, you can Battle Rage for one, but what does that do for two mana? You can slam the owl. Kill it. Yay, with... proc and avenge. <laughs> yeah, that would be so, tough. But the uh, Lothep goes down. Raven. So about those players, what? Hoy versus Ecop. We we mentioned yesterday that the, the lineup is stacked, and uh, Hoy. You know, I, I think about Hoy as the competitor in the in the last year's um, Road to BlizzCon, where he made it to to European champs. He performed really well, and he was um, knocked out by Skaka, but also the winner of Via Game House Cup and uh, top four at DreamHack Winter. So Hoy was super consistent, and obviously winning Divinity. So super consistent performance yeah. from where we've learned uh, about him uh, and from his break for tournament. Uh, what do we know about Ecop? How was how was he doing uh, last year and this year? Yeah, so Ecop um, was pretty big on the scene when the when the game first came out. Uh, but this past year, he's not really had too many uh, too many 
big tournament wins. Um, he got uh, top four at the DreamHack Let's Pick. Uh, and after that, though, he's not really had anything too major. T 2014 was, was the year for ECOP, so he's definitely looking at doing a, you know, putting a good performance on the board now. All right, so really great players facing each other, and uh, Hoy probably wants to go to follow at the steps of uh, Sixo, his teammate, who went through, and then Ecop would like to avoid getting eliminated like Colenso. Yeah, and looking at this thing now, like, this is really, really rough for Ecop, because now Gromash, like, he is heading towards the turns where he can drop Boom, drop Gromash, but Ecop's just not drawn any weapons or any of like the mid game in terms of patrons or even a frothing berserker can be quite difficult for the paladin to deal with because it's something you do have to kill off with the potential for a lot of extra damage by uh, say whirlwind and a board down of uh, muster for battle one ones or anything like that so it uh, completely missing the mid range and speaking of patrons he's just got one but uh we'll see if it's too little too late as how he's gonna be able to go into belcher if he wants to he can blast it for kings um and then next turn he has boom yeah, a lot of great options for Hoy, and uh, that patron, you know, even though he got it, he doesn't have uh, any activators there, so... Normally, it's great versus Paladin, but not when the pa Paladin has the board and can snowball. So, uh, looking at Hoy's options here, if if you go for Blessing, you will be able to create a dude as well. Uh, Belcher can, uh, well, can block some attacks, but I believe you still kill the 5 free anyway, uh, with what you have. Yeah, do you do you want to bless the king's the spider here so it lives uh, from the trade with the Lothab? Do, do you want to do it that way or do you want to run the 4-3 into the Belcher? Uh, into the Lothab, sorry. That's a really interesting question. So if you run the 4-3 into, into... Well, first I would probably blessing of kings, let's say a 1-1. One, one, and then attack into Armorsmith. And then attack into, into Lothab. But uh, I can absolutely get behind this play as well because... With the Blessing of Kings, what happened was that the trades were a bit awkward. Like, you you would yeah. lose more than gain. And here, even though you're floating one mana, you clear the board and you develop your own at the same time. Yeah, and clearing the board and creating your own is really powerful when your opponent doesn't have a weapon locked in. If there was a Death Spike ready for its second charge this turn, Hoy wouldn't have played that how he did. But yeah. now, his, his, his board's very safe. What's a Patron Warrior actually going to do? Like... There's like potential slam on the 4-2 to kill it or an execute if you want, but on an empty board, Patron doesn't have the potential burst it used to, so it is reliant on wrestling for that board control in the mid game, and it's just not there for Ecop at the moment. It has just slammed into a Fire War Axe, though, so that's actually pretty nice. He can clear off the Beltram. Because he has two executes, we might actually see one go down on the 4-3, followed up by a Corsair now. Yeah, he also got, uh, got the weapon that was really important because I wanted to mention that Red Corsair seemed like a cruel joke for Eco, just getting it without any weapons. But fortunately for him, he got that uh, the weapon from the slam and uh, put himself in a, in a position where he at least contests this board. But this is the turn where Hoy can uh, make a decision again. So he can go for Dr. Boom, which seems uh, okay. It's a seven mana um, creature, really good. But he also has Blessing of Kings and um, F Master for Battle open, where with that, he will be able to actually kill the Corsair with the weapon, paying with his health again a bit, and um, having a big taunt to block the weapon and deal face damage. But Dr. Boom might still be better. It's just so powerful. Yeah, I think actually because Hoy has just seen an Execute used, he might feel much safer about just throwing the three minions into the Corsair, again, clear the board, and then just play Dr. Boom, because it's going to be the turn before his opponent can, right? So at worst, they answer with a Dr. Boom, but you have the initiative on the attack. And he's just seen an Execute, and then again, there's no Death by Whirlwind effect, so you, it, for a quick Execute, it needs to either be Face Tanked or Whirlwind, and if it's Whirlwind, then he can't answer with his own Dr. Boom because he's one mana short. So this is pretty good play for Hoy. I like this, but just purely on seeing the execute already. There was there was one risk though that Bigham Hunter have mentioned before. If I, if Ecop would be playing one, um, uh, then playing a Dr. Boom and getting it uh, BGH, uh, BGH is a, a big tempo swing. But uh, for now, it's uh, really good for Hoy. He has nine power on board. He can put uh, five more, so 14. Not there yet. Uh, but uh, still, it looks amazing. I don't think you expect a brawl from Patron, so maybe he can even... Hmm. Like, he can just continue doing damage here, I feel. Um, dealing with the board and, and having a board advantage. So, going for face is an option, but you probably don't want to do it unless you feel like you have enough burst. But you're a Paladin, so 
if you can continue maintaining the board and having more creatures, like the Sludge Belcher is a, is a good pickup, and if you can follow up with Master, I would not hate just trading my boom into boom and bombs and bombs into bombs. Yeah, I kind of like the bombs into bombs and then Belcher into Noble Sacrifice because then he either runs his weapon into it or runs boom into it, which means that the um, the the Belcher should stick, you know, at least one part of it. Yeah. Uh, Holly's actually just played the muster, giving his opponent as many potential like whiffs with the bombs as possible. So, I mean, this still makes the Belcher, you know, pretty much soak up the Doctor Boom and the weapon, um, while still putting a few minions on the board and guarding his Doctor Boom as well. Because if the two bombs hit Boom and killed it, you know, Holly would be pretty upset about that. Since that's, as you said earlier, the majority of his bursts, like Palvin doesn't really run much burst straight from hand. It always needs like minions on the board or something like that. So um, I think, I this think is pretty good, it, I think. By the way. Uh, because uh, there is no way to deal with um, with the Doctor Boom. So with the buff, with the Blessing of Kings, that's at least plus four. Um, uh, he could he could Grom into it and execute. Oh no, he can't execute with Grom. He only has eight mana. Yeah. Oh. So if he armors yeah. up, he'll be at 15, and there is at least 9, 10, 14. So he can um, survive if he armors up and plays a minion, I guess. But that's uh, not something you want to to want to do, Doctor. Yeah, because the issue is if you armor up, you don't really have what, what's his following turn. Like, yes, he'll be alive on like very little health. Even taking the Blessed of Kings out of it. He'll be alive, but then, like, how does he actually do anything else after that? It's going to be really rough. Yeah, but he might not just have a different play anyway. I mean, he cannot play. Uh, he cannot kill Doctor Boom. So armor up is a really smart choice here. Uh, he is alive for now. But there's a bit more damage uh, for, nope. for Hoy. It's a pretty reasonable card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is going to be pretty good. I guess he's trading. Is he trading into Boom with this? Or... Oh no, he has to what am I talking about. I can't count. So pretty rough game for Ecop, and as we said earlier, it's, um, the he really, he, as the patron, you really do need to get those uh, Grim Patrons on the board early, or at least draw a weapon to contest the Paladin, because Hoy was almost just left to do what he wanted in the early to mid game there. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, I think I, I miscounted the damage. What did I miss? Like, maybe I missed the attack into uh, the 1-2. Yeah, the extra 1 damage, I yeah, guess. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We'll let you off. It's the first game, Nymph. <laughs> yep, just need to warm, warm up. up. Sorry Fine. for that, guy. Sorry for that. I just woke up. <laughs> I'm, I'm in sure chat spotted that before us anyway, so it wouldn't be a problem. They got us covered. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the lineups, though. Uh, so we've seen the Paladin and we've seen the Warrior. Um, Hoy also has Druid and Shaman. And then Ecom has Mage and Warlock. Oh, really interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see what Warlock and Mage Ecom's brought, because again, both of those classes, as we talked about a bit yesterday in terms of uh, class and uh, deck variation within the classes, like the Warlock, we saw a lot of Zoo being popular uh, recently. But on the other hand, you know, Ecom has played Reno in some, uh, some tournaments and some appearances. And then... Also, his mage, like Freeze Mage, could be pretty good, but then are you worried a bit about the, the fact that it's a non ban format? Uh, so the Freeze Mage can perform even better, I guess. So it'd be really interesting to see which archetypes E Cop has brought. We do see Hoy's playing his Shaman, though, and that looks like Shock Horror, a fairly aggressive list. Oh my goodness. Look at this opening from Hoy with double Tano Trog. He's just missing an Overload card, but. Even without an overload card for now, this will be really threatening. E Cop will be so. Oh, he got the total golem. <laughs> so, this is the perfect opening for Hoy. E Cop, yet again, is lacking a weapon. Fiery War Axe is so important in this matchup just to be able to kill off the Tunnel Trog um, early on because you just want that card gone. You, you overcommit into killing those cards if you need to. Uh, you just need it gone um, or else it can just run away with the game. And there's no executes, there's no weapons. There's nothing that can really deal with this, uh, the, well, this pair of tunnel trogs. I just want to see Ecop's expression when he sees a double trog. Is he showing anything? Nope. Okay. No, oh, because he top decked the war axe. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's good for him. That I think actually that was just needed because there was a very glad chance the game was over if he cut didn't draw into a weapon. Maybe this turn or next turn. There was still a chance with maybe unstable goal, like blocking one attack, uh, damaging one of the minions, and then trying to come back with like a whirlwind or a minion follow up by the weapon. But yeah, absolutely, the fire war axe was essential. 
Yeah, and very swiftly though, this is actually looking pretty okay for Ecop now. The Water Axe into the uh, Berserker again. Wow, Earthstruck's pretty reasonable though to deal with the Berserker if he chooses to, but the Berserker then into, um, say, Armorsmith Ghoul, then into Patron in a Rage, because you don't really need to make too many Patrons in this matchup initially if you don't if you can't because th the shaman doesn't want to kill stuff right the shaman yeah. wants to just hit you in the face so if they start lightning bolting patrons or crackling or you know lava shocking patrons you know the, the more time you have to just not die and outlast the uh the shaman because the warrior's hero power as well will just keep putting themselves out of range so Absolutely. Cups, now we've got a pretty reasonable chance yeah i think he's actually ahead and um Hoy is, um, you would say it's running out of cards, but he has the loot quarter and he has uncertain knowledge to refill his hand, so he will have some time. Uh, and Ecop now getting the death spite as well, so a perfect death spite on turn four into those four patrons might just swing the game. Even though Hoy started with this double double trog into into golem, that single fireworks into death spite is changing the game. Yeah, and the fact that he can build the patrons, then drop Ghoul Armor Smith. The turn after, which is is you know, Ecop's already seen one Earth Shock. Very difficult to stop the ghoul giving the warrior a ton of armor that turn. So Ecop looks like he's uh, feeling pretty good about this, and uh, even the feral spirits from Hoy might not be enough at this point. Look at his his face. He's so happy. <laughs> yeah, Ecop <laughs> the uh, definitely always, always got the, this happy face on that he's known for. This is his happy face for sure. <laughs> Yeah, this is, it's really odd that he, if you just look at Ecop's camera, you're like, how do, does he look like he's winning or losing this game? And he's got his head in his arm like, oh yeah, you know, this looks terrible. And it's like, no Ecop, you're winning. But you're you know, on fine. the other hand, Hoy is actually also super peaceful uh, when you look at him. And when he plays tournaments, you can never say if he's nervous or not. I, I still remember the time when he won Trifinity. Uh, we were um, we were telling him that hey, you were not nervous. Like you looked great, and he's like, oh, really? I was dying inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he has like Holly has one of the best poker faces in Hearthstone. To be honest, like anything can happen, and he, he's, his face just doesn't change. He's just sat there like, yeah, okay. But there can be like the most crazy, unstable portal into Deathwing against him, and he's still just like. Well, it's Hearthstone. Yeah, I'll just uh, just carry on win this game anyway. You know, like it's super chill. Well, while, while saying that, he's actually shaking his head. <laughs> he's like, nope, I cannot he's, get out of this. He's normally place. super chill. <laughs> I would be shaking my head too, though, if I had to deal with this page. And this is exactly what I was talking about earlier. The second the, the aggro shaman is lava bursting a patron, when you have still have three on the board, two of which can generate more patrons, then you've got to be feeling pretty good. And I think this armor smith into a ghoul armor up is feeling pretty likely. Uh, it feels like a concede from Hoy. I, I think when you see that, when you look at your options, you, you'll just uh, concede and, and that's basically it. Because you know in, in the next two turns, you have no card that can make you come back from the situation. And as you mentioned before, this is not the Shaman's plan. You do not want to, um, to, to contest this board, unless he has Elemental Distraction. Nope. <laughs> or at least he didn't draw it. But also, uh, he, the fact that he had to use Earth Shock early on, um, a lot of these decks only run one. So it's not as if it's like, okay, if I top deck Earth Shock, Earth Shock the Armor Smith, then, you know, like you said, maybe get some AoE after that. I've still got a chance. It's like, if he's only playing one Earth Shock, he cannot kill that ghoul without generating at least seven armor, which is then just too much on top of the warrior being able to hear a power as well. Yeah. And now he still has to win with the Shaman deck. And Ecop has that uh, Mage and Warlock. So we'll see how it works. Ecop didn't bring a Paladin. And normally Shaman deck is this free win versus Paladins. But if there is no Paladin, can you win with the deck? Yeah, it's going to be um, it's gonna be an interesting one. Because just jumping out at me in terms of Ecop's lineup, if it's Freeze Mage, or even Tempo to a certain extent, we could be looking like an anti-Paladin lineup. Yeah. So um, his Patron Warrior obviously lines up pretty well. We'll pretty swiftly find out what this Warlock is. Um, and then, yeah, and the Mage, whether it's Freeze or Tempo, do pretty well versus Secret Paladin. So Ecop just could be trying to just single out the deck now. And here's yet another Zoo Lock, which is fantastic. I love this deck at the moment. Yeah, it's an amazing deck, and it's a great matchup for Ecop. Uh, so Zoo always was good versus Druids, especially versus Druid that misses his Wild Grove. Uh, we'll see if Hoy will be able to pick it up, but uh, Gormok, he is running it, and he is uh, going hard on this on this first turn. Yeah, this seems uh, very much, uh, or at least if not exact, but similar to the list we saw Sixo run yesterday. Yeah, um, that he's a fan of, and uh, 
although Hoy missed his uh, wild growth, he did have wrath at least, so he can remove like the flaming, which is the key danger at the moment in terms of pushing damage. So that at least you know slows Ecop down a little bit. It does slow him down, but on the other hand, uh, Hoy doesn't have a turn three, turn four play. Uh, Ecop's turn two is not great with just life up, but he got a turn three, which is pretty nice. Yeah, the scary thing with Zoo as well is like. Because the curve is so low, right, even if you have to live tap, well, you know next turn's almost guaranteed to be playable, right? Because you have so many low curve minions that you can definitely squeeze at least one or two in per turn quite easily. Oh man, Raven, it really feels bad to shapeshift on turn three. But you know yeah. what's worse? Shapeshift on turn four. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. He, he hits Savage Draw now to kill the Voidwalker. Confirmed. We did see G Finity Hoy. Yeah, oh, okay, maybe not now he's got Wild Growth. We did see G Finity Hoy was playing Druid versus Paladin, and he actually Savage Draw on three to just to kill a juggler off, and it ended up actually being one of the winning plays of that specific game. So yeah. Hoy's, uh, Hoy is such a good player. He has some very like heads up uh, plays and things that don't look obvious, but when you look at the game as like a whole picture, it actually works out really well. Absolutely. Um, but for now, it doesn't look good. Uh, he will only have on turn 6 that Azure Drake, which is uh, an easy prey for uh, Ecop's minions. And Ecop can uh, do whatever he wants uncontested for now, just playing the best cards he has at the moment. And he still has a great follow-up. He has Iron Big Owl for, for, for a Silence, for a Taunt. He has Implosion and Abusive to deal with something that is being played by Hoy, and he still has a nice board. I think what's important this turn is that unless Hoy actually kills the Voidwalker, Ecop can quite happily play Abusive Sergeant and then Gormok Battlecry. So he can Abusive Sergeant the uh, Voidwalker and then Gormok, this Druid of the Claw, straight up and just kill it. Yeah. That's, uh, it feels like a pretty reasonable turn. If I was the Zoo player, <laughs> I'd be pretty ha pretty okay with this turn versus Druid. Would you be? Uh, really? I, yeah, I, think, I think it's okay, right? It's okay. It does the job, I suppose. You know, just playing another 4-4, four, four, deal 4 damage. Throwing away your Voidwalker that soaked up two hero powers from the Druid. And then you can tell your grandchildren, like, remember when uh, Daddy played in the five, $5,000 tournament? I mean, like, $10,000, but I've won, like, 5000 I, I had this turn <laughs> with Gormak. <laughs> yeah, do you remember when Gormak just won the game for me? Yeah, that was a, that was a good day. <laughs> nice. Uh, so this is rough. I mean, is there even realistically a way? I mean, I think Hoy might just have to play Dr. Boom here and hope. Yeah, it seems like this is the, one of the turns where you are so behind that you, ho that you hope your opponent has four angry chickens in hand and you just slam Boom to get a remote chance of winning. Because if you just go for... Well, Ancient of Lore and Heal doesn't change anything. You just lose it. And um, there is no way to come back. Like, you just prolong your death. With Dr. Boom, if... Your opponent doesn't have anything, you at least have a chance to fight back. Yeah, but we can see that Ecop does, and this is going to be lethal with the Doom Guard all to face. But, you know, something you, again, like like you said, Nymph, you have to appreciate is if you're on Hoy's end, you make the play that actually has the chance of you winning the game, uh, and not the play that just makes you draw out the game one more turn, then you die. Yeah, exactly. All right, so Ecop takes game number three, gets a lead 2-1 to one versus Hoy, and now he is left with his mage deck. So we will see what kind of mage is that, and Hoy can uh, pick his druid, or the other deck he has, which this, is... This is really scary, actually, because think, think in Hoy's position, he has druid and secret piling, right? Yeah. So if he picks druid, he will want Ecop's mage to be freeze. He has Shaman, actually, as the, as the deck that's left. Oh, yeah, he won. Sorry, yeah, he has Shaman. Okay. Well, the Druid pick is going to be rough either way. I imagine he'll pick Shaman then, because the Druid one, at least, if he knows what type of mage it is, he can play around it. But he doesn't. He picks his Druid, and if this is Tempo Mage for me, Cup, this is going to definitely be a bit of a rough one. Yeah, but if this is a Freeze Mage, it's actually a good matchup for Hoi. Yeah. Oh, and we'll typically have to wait just a, just a minute just to see the uh, cards from Ecop. I'm... Really looking forward to seeing what this mage deck is. Do you think it's tempo or freeze? Uh, you can't I say think no. It might be freeze, but it's, it's tempo. Actually tempo. <laughs> yeah. Missed it. With a pretty reasonable start. Yeah. So I, I said the freeze because I've seen Eco playing mostly freeze mage before. Um, but uh, this is actually favoring him again. And uh, you know, if you feel like there's a lot of druids being played in the metagame, especially if you know your group and you know who are you playing against, then uh, tempo mage makes a lot of sense as a deck to bring. Yeah, and Ecrop got a pretty good start. Um, 
as a tempo mage is like a generic start regardless of you know the class you're against um, but I imagine like he would definitely want to see a flame cannon somewhere in there because the flame cannon just like it's so good versus druid it pretty much kills off most of their uh, early minions and then um, also you know pretty easily helps deal with things like druid of the claw as it takes them to uh, just to, to health so it's not too bad yeah um, there, is a, there is a lot of tools that are actually great versus druid and that's why this deck is so good uh, mirror energy that he picked up right now uh, might be a bit awkward to play it from uh, for free mana but still sometimes you just lock a turn from from druid like if you if you have this key turn on you play it on turn five before druid plays a five drop or before turn seven when they want to play ancient of lore you will always get something because uh, as we see how he played aspirin right now and and he will not have any more small minions but uh oh Ikov is going for it at the moment that's a that's a nice play because you kind of block um a shredder and there are not more small minions most of the druid decks they play only one aspirin maybe one shade even yeah, exactly. And the thing as well is, if he didn't play the Entity then, his turn was really awkward. He could play the Apprentice, um, Portal, Hope for something, and like Arcane Blast the 1-1, one -one, but then the Aspirin just kills the Apprentice. He could play Flame Waker on its own, but then it dies to the minions and hero power and the Aspirin still lives. So nothing felt clean enough there for Ecop. So he decided to play the Mirror Entity for the exact reasons you just said, so he can then gain the tempo from the Druid almost... It's Almost so having to only have big minions left, right? Exactly. It's so funny. It's like saying, oh, so you ramp. Show me what you got. Give it to me. <laughs> and he, Hoy's just handing him a low step. And Hoy, again, making the play that this looks kind of rough because it's almost always my entity in this spot. But Hoy, if he just passed, then, like, you know, if he did nothing this turn, then, it, you know, it, he falls behind because then the mage just sort of gain, will be, potentially be able to gain the tempo back. Whereas at least this locks out the spells. So... The Lothebs might trade for each other, but Hoy still has the 2-3 and the 1-1 one, one that the mage couldn't really deal with the previous turn. Yeah, that's true. Um, the thing is, like, Hoy right now has Wrath, and he knew that the best attack will be uh, into the Aspirin. So with the Wrath, he will be able to deal with the 5-3 Lothab. Um, and that, now even better, he might actually... Um, oh, he can't play Azure this turn, so... He can, he can swipe Innovate Wrath for hero 1 power. to draw, if he yeah, wants. Yeah, or Hero Power, it depends. Yeah, or Hero Power, yeah. So whenever it was actually a, a nice card here. Is there anything else? Like, if you want to... Is there any point to Wild Growth? Like, let's say a Wrath for free into the 5 free, attack the free 2, and then Wild I think, Growth. At, I think the only thing for Wild Growth is you Wild Growth in into 6, which doesn't really... Well, mo more times than not, doesn't really change your following turn. Um, and then the I think the curve feels pretty good, because next turn he almost certainly wants to as your Drake. Yeah. Um, I... I think he's weighing up whether he needs to clear or not. He probably does. I, I because like ne next really turn, good. yeah, next turn, like as your Drake innovate Wrath is pretty nice. But this turn, just to clear the board and then leave Lothab on there feels pretty good as well. This this play is especially good because he keeps the five five on board and he has a really good follow up with Azure Drake. So basically, he's seeing the tempo from the Temple Mage and uh, Temple Mage, even though it's good versus versus Druid, if you put him. Um, to be behind it will be hard to actually deal with everything uh, that druid can put up and eventually how he might just win with the combo eventually he'll uh, he'll draw into force of nature and savage and if may just uh, at that point at 14 points of health he will win anyway yeah exactly and the thing is tempo mage unless they have like an insane hand can really struggle to deal with multiple big minions the deck's good at clearing up little ones with flame waker into a lot of spells but unless those spells are probably what frost bolts flame cannons and fireballs any of the smaller ones like we can see the unstable portal arcane blast it can be really difficult to clear up the big guys and now hoy's got an interesting choice as to whether he wants to just clear the drake um with maybe Wrath Hero Power, or whether he wants to play his own Drake, kill the uh, Drake of Ecops and leave his Belcher, in, uh, his Belcher, sorry, his Lothab in pingable range. It's a yeah. really tough one, actually. It is a it is a tough decision, uh, but if we, if you consider it, if you attack into Azure Drake with your with your Lothab, you do force uh, a ping next turn. So this means your, your opponent will effectively have only four mana for uh, his uh, disposal. This might be one of the tempo, the tempo mage turns we all uh, know and love of being, what can he do here? He can Flame Waker, Unstable Portal, Arcane Blast to hopefully yeah. clear the board, I think. He, still... he could even Flame Waker, Frostbolt if he wants to be, like, really safe. For a full clear. Yeah. 
Yeah, I like it. And he, yeah, he's, he's going to play the safe play just because if he doesn't clear, then suddenly, you know, he's probably getting in a little bit of trouble because the flame waker can then uh, be very vulnerable uh, the thing if is, the bot's not empty. The thing is, he really can play it safe. Like, there is no reason to risk, I believe, because uh, he has Dr. Boom as a follow up on seven, and then on eight, he'll have unstable portals. And. A uh, portals only... can, can sometimes be tricky and give you angry chickens, but uh, most of the time they will give you a minion that you can actually play on those turns. Yeah, the, the, it's a tough one though, because like, it's like risk reward management, right? Because if he portaled, played the board and got like, you know, a low drop minion that's decent to, um, to, to play as well, suddenly there's a flame waker, a low drop, and then you can boom next turn and still have a frostball in the bank. But he did go for the safe play, just wants to clear it off the board, and as you said, rely on Dr. Boom with the follow-up of the scientist and the portals to, you know, fingers crossed, do some crazy things. And now an interesting turn for Hoy, where he cannot play the Ancients of Lore, but uh, what do you do with the Flame Waker? Um, from my experience, you have to clear Flame Waker as fast as possible, because if there is no Dr. Boom on 7, what you're going to face is Arcane Intellect into Portal into, or even Sorceress into Arcane Intellect. You, you will get so much damage from just spells. So I think it's essential to kill the Flame Waker. If you swipe it, it doesn't look great because you just uh, lost swipe, but uh, why would you need swipe in the future? Would you need swipe for um, for more creatures? Like, you feel, you've swiped once, and I don't think Tempo Mage is going to play a lot of creatures with low health anymore. Yeah. Um, the only benefit of playing Wrath Hero Power is that you can also play Wild Grow. Yeah, exactly. So you can just squeeze, it's just mana efficient, right? So you can just squeeze it all in and you know, holding onto swipes, okay, I guess, just to make everything a little bit weak and maybe plays a second Drake. Um, so that should be okay, but you know, we'll see how Hoya chooses to deal with Dr. Boom because it feels like it, Hoya's following turn is just going to be Ancient of Law. Hope he draws into BGH for the turn after. Yeah, and... Uh might be be really tough uh, there is force of nature but um with dr boom on board and that flame cannon ecop has everything to push the game in his favor and he still has those unstable portals just ready to oh rock. look at this turn oh <laughs> man even with worm yeah so scary and this is and again as, as i sort of mentioned earlier flame cannon is so good against druid because he's going to reduce for two mana he's going to make that minion a five one Play so good and just a casual uh, rough arm there casual for six rough arm. <laughs> yeah, just casual rough arm. I told you we'd have some crazy things from the portals. Just rough arm and just just you know just to pay for for some fun times next turn. Oh man, just giving the extra win conditions. It's like, hey, you run out of uh, win conditions, I can bring you some. Let's see what the the other card is. It's a beast. I've seen a beast. What was that? Oh, brilliant! It's a zero mana mounted raptor. Yeah, pretty good. So, un unstable portal doing some work. Flame cannon plus a bomb guarantees that the bomb will hit face for four. Wow, true tempo mage turn that. And that's uh, almost it. Like, um, Hoy is in a really bad spot here. So, swipe as mentioned doesn't do much. If you force, you can kill some things, but uh, you're still in a bad position. You're taking damage from Raptor, taking damage from the bomb, and there is Doctor Bomb waiting for you. So he's not dead yet or is he even if he goes for he might be just dead here actually yeah i think there's ways he can survive he can, can azure jake swipe obviously so that's that's probably the play like azure jake swipe and uh with this you will take them maybe azure jake will uh, will tank some damage and then dr boom doesn't kill you it's probably the only way yeah, but I was wishing he had just one more mana because Force of Nature swipe would feel a little bit better, I think, at this point. But we'll see what happens with the bomb. Probably pretty key here. And what comes out of the Raptor, I suppose, actually. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. So it's like eight damage incoming, at least, and the Raptor is doing... <laughs> Leopard, no. Oh, man. Just, just what Hoy <laughs> wants to see, more almost, like, confirmed damage. He could silence it if he really wants to, but Rafam's definitely going to be an unwelcome guest this turn. Well, Hoy is not dead yet, but he will be dead next turn. And even if he gets a Savage it will not be enough to finish the game. And uh, this turn, Ecop can deal, what, 10 damage? So put Hoy on, on 2. Yeah, let's see what spell. I'm guessing Ecop took the 10 damage from Hamlet, the big Avenging Wrath, right? Uh, the, 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 the clock, was it? Yeah. The watch, yeah. 
Yeah, I think this is the safest. Filling the bar doesn't mean anything when Hoy's on such low health. And the plus 10-10 is a bit ropey because Hoy might clear the board. So you just take 10 damage guaranteed. It might hit a couple of minions, but you only have to hit half, less than half now because the, uh, the Lepinome, he can actually take him to what? Take him to uh, two this turn? Two, two, yeah. But then there is no Which, need. You know, you know yeah. Druid normally doesn't have. Like double big game hunter <laughs> would maybe help. There is a savage or but it's it's too too late and um you know you might think about if there if there was a spot anywhere to get even a bit more damage on face like maybe swipe to the face somewhere but uh yeah, it's a tough one it's tough because like you think like if you push that then you, you, you probably you, you got down to three right potentially yeah. two that turn so he didn't i don't think really really had too much room to uh to wiggle there and to be honest that matchup or that match specifically shows how how rough it is for the Druid, because Hoy had a pretty reasonable start. His, his initial opening was good with the Living Roots and the Aspirant, but the second you miss a turn, because he had to, uh, I think he did the Hero Power turn three? I think yeah, he, yeah. he did power. Hero Power turn three, and uh, on turn four he played Wild Grove, so that was uh, pretty Yeah, cool. so once you miss a couple of turns versus oh, wait, that was not game. That was, I think that was the previous one. Yeah, I think he did Hero Power like, early on, though. Yeah, yeah. Um, because he had the hero power into... No, he did have hero power wild growth, I think. Yeah, but so, still, um, you have to command Eco for a really nice lineup because I, I feel like he countered Hoi perfectly with the first game being Patron versus Paladin. Uh, he didn't draw cards that he wanted, but still, that was a good matchup for him. Then he ended up with the Patron versus uh, Shaman, which was uh, a good matchup again. And um, Zoo versus Druid, and then Temple Mage versus Druid. So he got those... Um, well, not to say easy wins because Hoy didn't get the cards he needed, but he definitely had it a bit favored from the start. So really good uh, deck choice for, for that match at least. Yeah, definitely. A lot of prep uh, gone into the lineups there, and it seems to be paying off Recop so far. Yeah, and uh, this, this is the first match, uh, guys. We just started day two of Hearthstone Champions League. This is a $10,000 tournament. The winner will take $5,000. We, uh, we had Group A yesterday. Uh, we're going with Group B today. So RDU versus Pavel coming up next. And then on Thursday, we'll have Group C. And on Friday, we'll have Group D. Uh, Raven, uh, what's our lineup? Because we have still a lot of great players who have to play. Yep, so in Group C on Thursday, we're going to see Show, Life Coach, Drive Crow, and Orange. So that's going to be... I think if I had to pick a group, that's probably the most insane one. Um, and then Group D, we have Oskaka, Hannibal, Z, uh, Tides of Time, and Tice. So, I mean, to be fair, every group's pretty insane. Yeah, but yeah this is going to be a really good event, like one of the most stacked tournaments I've actually ever seen. Yeah, absolutely. And the, and the format is that out of the groups, we are playing double elimination. So uh, two people will be eliminated today. Uh, Hoy is still alive. He lost to Ecop, but if he wins uh, two next matches, he will uh, actually go through. So he's still fighting. And uh, Ecop, if he wins one more, uh, he will go through as well. So we will see. We'll see. Uh, yesterday, we had some surprises with uh, Colento and Doc eliminated from the tournament. Stan Sivka and Sixo moving forward to the, uh, to the top eight playoffs. Uh, so a really good day yesterday and today. I'm, I'm looking forward to all the matches as well. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to the next match, uh, like RDU versus Pavel. Probably a, sort of a bigger name in RDU than you know Pavel, but Pavel is known for his, uh, for his run through uh, championships last year. So it would be good to see what he can do versus RDU the next match. Absolutely. All right, guys, give us a moment where we prepare the next match for you, and we'll come back in, in just a moment with the the next match. 